Hey guys, welcome back. Now, I know we've talked a lot about Star Wars The Acolyte lately. Unfortunately, despite the show itself being a miserable failure and not many people actually tuning in to watch it, it is still a massive topic of discussion online, on social media, and so we are going to cover all the news surrounding it. So, while the show itself is pushing a lot of different ideas like aliens having pronouns and uh you know lesbian witches conceiving children through the thread instead of the force because obviously the force is a male construct and so the thread has to be fighting the patriarchy i'm assuming we have seen some absolutely incredible cringe come out of this show and the best is yet to come and we will save that for the end of this video so don't tune out don't go anywhere we're going to get to that very soon so this article from that park place says the acolyte writer claire keichel uh, explains why May abandoned her quest for revenge, why the show included pronouns, why Ki Adi Mundi was included, and why the Wookiee Jedi was killed off screen. Basically, I'll save you some time on this. A lot of these excuses from the writer, it's just, oh, because we felt like it, haha, ha, it was funny, it was cute, what's your problem? So the article says the Acolyte writer Claire Keichel uh, answered numerous complaints about the most recent episode of the Acolyte that she wrote for Cora Donna, including why May abandoned her quest for revenge against the Jedi, why the show included pronouns, and why the Je Wookiee Jedi Kelnaka was killed off screen. Now, I also brought up some points on Twitter uh, surrounding the whole Wookiee Jedi being killed by a flesh wound. People were like, well, if you got a problem with somebody surviving getting run through with a lightsaber, why would you question a flesh wound killing a Wookiee? I'm like, well, because Wookiees in... The Star Wars lore are incredibly strong, very good at healing, and this is a freaking Jedi. So why would a flesh wound kill a Jedi Wookiee when people have been run through with a lightsaber, had their organs uh, completely disintegrated, and survived? Again, nobody has a good answer for these, these things that have happened on the show, and so of course she tried to answer some of them apparently. This guy here, Desert Daddy, said, We never got a chance to see the Wookiee Jedi fight. Shame on you. And she responded, Unfortunately, not everything gets to be included for budget and story reasons. We had an early draft that showed his fight and death scene, but it ultimately broke the POV of the episode in a way that I think wouldn't have worked as well. Now, if you've watched some cutscenes from this show, I'm assuming most people actually haven't watched the actual show itself other than some clips. It's very poorly filmed. The filming is weird, it's very CW-ish, it's, I cannot believe that this show cost them $180 million for 8 episodes, because it is incredibly amateur looking, both as far as the acting, the script, the sets, it's just, it's bad. The choreography, the choreography is just <laughs> embarrassing with the force foo stuff they've tried doing. So another person says, I hope I don't sound rude, but if I may ask, are they mandating y'all to keep the episode short? I wish they were longer like other streamers. She responded with, we wrote this one in next week's together, and they kind of had a total ballpark limit for the both. For reasons, next week's had to be the longer ones. This one had to be kept short. Um, and then, of course, you get to some of the spicier ones, right? So you get to this one down here where they talk about the whole Disney Star Wars pronouns. This person here, Nick, says, which loser decided to use pronouns? And she says, it's obviously a joke about pronouns because she's referring to a strange little animal creature. Not sure the upset on this one. She does it again over and over and over again. Says that this person, you, is a pronoun. Um, that's me, ruiner of worlds. Again, just gaslighting people left and right. She knows what the issue is, but she won't address it. This person here, Zach Larson, says, You wrote this episode. Well, then I have a question. Why is Ki Adi Mundi in it? He wasn't even born yet. He's not supposed to know anything about the Sith. She responds, He doesn't know anything about the Sith. Why would he? And we offered the part to Yoda, but he wasn't technically available, so a young Ki Adi Mundi stepped in for the part. Again, just deflection and gaslighting, right? Well, now in this episode, in case we didn't cover this yesterday, it's not just the pronouns. It's not just the idea that you have Wookiee Jedi getting killed off screen, the Jedi being evil, Ki-Adi Mundi showing up, a whole lot of retconning and lore destruction happening in this show already. But they also are trying to create another homosexual relationship between Jackie Lon, who's played by the girl that was in uh, Logan, who's this, you know, this young Jedi Padawan, and Amanda Stenberg's Asha. So this article here covers it pretty well, and of course, Decider is going to be happy about it says, Disney plus new Star Wars series, The Acolyte takes us back in time to when the Jedi were at their zenith. I have a hard time <laughs> believing that. The Jedi Knights of the High Republic era wear golden tunics, sport multicolored lightsabers, and apparently flirt. Yeah, because that's what we need to see is more lesbian flirting. Long story short, the actress here says that they... Well, we'll just start with the original quote. I'm so happy you asked that because this is my favorite question ever. The Acolyte star Daphne Keen gushed when Decider asked her just this question last month. And this is referring to as their romance between Jackie and Osha. 
I think for Jackie, it's very confusing because as Jedi, you're not allowed to have feelings for other people, attachments. And I think, I think, he, 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 I think she does. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I think she does. Mind you, this is even a stranger because one's an alien, one's a human, and she's much younger than her. So this is a very weird way to take this show. It's a very strange show. It's very creepy, very disturbing. But now that we have this actress here, of course, Amanda Stenberg has been clapping back at people. We've seen the quotes from her, the interviews where she says she wants to make white people uncomfortable, make white people cry. Um, the show is very gay. It's intended to be very gay, gay as Star Wars ever. Nerds are gay. Now today, on Juneteenth, of all the holiest of days, we have this. And this person here with, of course, the Palestinian Black Lives Matter fist in the bio, they, them, shared it saying, Amanda Stenberg wrote, recorded, shot, and edited a song and music video in just 72 hours as a response to all the disgusting racist hate from Star Wars fans and dropped that on Juneteenth. An icon, a legend. Amanda said racist and clickbait journalism, go choke, I am obsessed. Now, guys, I apologize in advance for your ears. I have pre-screened this. I'm pretty sure this is not copyrighted, so forgive me. If, if we're lucky, it'll get copyright claimed and I'll have to mute the video. <laughs> but I'm just going to play this and let it go for two minutes. Please, just hang in there, okay? I know, we're going to stop right there. Obviously, she's detailing her, her past history and a lot of the controversy. Again, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be singing or rapping. Clearly, she is just as bad as a vocal performer as she is an actress. The youth, there's the last word that they cut off there. I am so sorry that we had to play that, but you had to experience that for yourself to really understand it. Now, if you want to truly get to the bedrock of this, the heart of the issue, this is the person who is the lead actress in the current Star Wars Acolyte show. Imagine in the day, go back 10, 20, 30 years, if anybody associated with Star Wars, whether the original trilogy, the prequels, and the prequels had a lot of hate. If you're forgetting about this, not everybody remembered the prequels fondly. I was there as a teenager. I watched them. I hated them. I ragged on them. I hated Jar Jar Binks. I hated Jake Lloyd as Anakin. I hated all of it, okay? <laughs> I still don't like the prequels. If I go back and watch them now, I'm still dreading having to show my kids Phantom Menace. I know they got better. I know Revenge of the Sith was better than Attack of the Clones, which was better than the Phantom Menace. But people have this revisionist history where they believe that the prequels were amazing and nobody at the time gave those movies any criticism. This actress would never have survived during the criticism of The Phantom Menace. And here she is making everything about race, everything about color of skin, everything about bigotry and racism, when the reality is this is deflection for the fact that she has put out a subpar product that nobody wants, nobody cares about, and it is dropping, it's down to 14% for God's sake on Rotten Tomatoes. IMDB is not much better, or, or Metacritic, whichever one I was looking at yesterday. And this is just deflection for people who are basically nepotism babies. They just have gotten to where they are because they know somebody. They have no talent, they have no skill. They're not used to being told no, and that's where we are. But I'm gonna leave it right there, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know what you've, you're thinking about Acolyte. Let me know if you enjoyed this wonderful piece of music, and we will catch you on the next one. All right, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. I do have two channels, Minimal Effort Podcast, as well as my gaming channel. I do have a Twitch and Kick for my gaming channel. We do live streams over there occasionally, maybe once a week. And then if you are in the market for a new PC, make sure to check out Meta PCs. Click the link I have down below. Use code TEBO at checkout for a special discount. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.